Hello my darlings, today I am taking you on an altar tour of my three working altars. So I'm going to show you everything, okay? I'm going to let you know what is going on with every space in my home where I spend significant spiritual time. And this is the first of the three that I want to show you. It is my dedicated altar to the goddess Hell, the Norse goddess of the underworld. She's my matron and she has been my matron for a very long time now. Our relationship is old and sumptuous and wondrous. And I really wanted to have a dedicated hell space in my home. And when I made this, I think I've had this for about, is it two years now? Maybe more? I don't know. I never used to work with a dedicated hell space. Um, but when I actually began this process, it was so nurturing. And I'm so, so glad that I have an altar specifically to her. Um, it really helped me to sort of connect my work with her uh, much more closely to my heart than when I had my hell bits and pieces on the main altar. It feels a lot less kind of disjointed now because if I want to do devotional to her, if I want to do divination to connect with her, I come here rather than doing it in one space on the main altar, which I'll show you later. All the magic takes place here, right? So it's very helpful and useful to me. Um, you can see the vast majority of this altar, but I will just lift you up a touch. Up there is the final piece of the hell altar and that is my um, portrait of hell that I made my collage portrait of hell I'll show you a close-up of that in a wee while um, but I wanted to settle the camera down here so I can kind of point out bits and pieces to you and so that you don't get camera sick with me moving things around so much okay so I've got some incense burning at the back there in this little box I like to put an incense cone on when I'm working here and then you can also see that I have two candles lit. I have here the um, the skull candle, and uh, that's very sort of like uh, very goth and very trashy in a good way. I'll definitely show you a little bit more of a close up of that later. And my working candle, I always work with a black candle for hell. And then you can see that I've got Hagalaz, which is hell's rune, up on the wall behind the black mirror, which I do use for scrying, but I also just think aesthetically it looks pleasing. And then I've got this little uh, Memento Mori card that I got. It was like a, a spare card in a deck, I think. I, I don't remember which one even. I've had it for so long. And I will show you that. I will sort of uh, give you a close up of that in a few minutes. But that spoke to me as being very hell-esque. So I've had that up there for a long time as well. So that gives me kind of like the visual component on the wall. In the front here, I've got this portrait. This is actually a photograph of a tombstone or a statue anyway that is near some tombs in a cemetery somewhere. I've got no idea where that cemetery is. I could not tell you. I don't really remember. And I don't think that this is actually supposed to be a statue of hell. In fact, when I was looking through the Google image search for a decent image of hell to just place into a frame for my altar, um, this particular statue that's photographed here was described as the angel of death. So it has wings as well, as you can see, it's got wings on it. So it's not actually supposed to depict hell, but to me, it gives me such a hell vibe. And obviously there is the half skeleton and half fleshly face there and a very meditative expression on the face. Um, so for me, it just really spoke to me. And so I've had that, that there for quite a while. And I've also obviously got the two statuettes of hell here and here. Uh, both of them were gifted to me by clients and um, I remember to this day receiving them and the joy that I got from receiving them and the appreciation that I felt that clients would send me things like that for my altar. And uh, this little lady here is also a, a gift from a client that was made by a client for me and I've always had that on the hell altar too. So just give you a sense of the statuettes here. So potent really lovely to have them this little one as well with the Hagalaz rune on and hell written in runes so again it just really helps with that visual component and helps with connection I've got a big bunch of stones on the altar I'm really working a lot with stones at the moment so there's lots of black tourmaline which is uh, a big thing for hell and then I've also got some marble jasper that I'm working with I've got some quartz um, some serpentine beautiful piece of lapis there that was gifted to me by a friend for my birthday I've got some pendulums that I work with so you know lots of things that you would expect to see on a witch's altar um, and on a on an altar for a witch whose matron is hell I've got this beautiful pendant that was made for me by Anatorian and I love it I've always kept it 
on my hell altar or in my hell area, if you will. So that's also really beautiful. And because it's a pendant, I do sometimes wear it. Uh, I've got a couple of mixtures here that I use that I put onto my skin when I'm working with hell. So this was made for me by a witch a very long time ago, but I keep adding oil to it and filling it up because it's still got that original scent of the pepper and the elderberries and everything. And it's still got the little, um, there's like a little skull inside it. I don't know if you can see, but there is actually a little skull inside it. And I really wanted to keep it even though it was from ages ago. So I just kept kind of topping it up. Um, it's a long way from the original oil that it was, but it still retains some of that original scent, you know, and the original bits and pieces in it. Got another oil that was made for me by a witch to my specifications. I tend to put them on my pulse points um, when I'm about to do a devotional or commune with hell by way of runes, you know, or by way of praying. And I've also got this uh, really beautiful cardamom coffee uh, perfume by Lush. I really love working with perfumes, darlings. Like, for me, I feel like once you give a perfume the specific specific association of um, a goddess that you work with or a type of magic that you do, a type of mood that you want to get into, whenever you then put that perfume on, it takes you to that place mentally, right? It takes you into that particular mindset. It gives you that particular feeling. So uh, a friend gifted me that cardamom coffee by Lush and... I just wanted to put it on my hell altar and make that association with her. So um, this is my second bottle of this stuff. I do tend to just put it uh, in the air, not always on my pulse points. It depends. If I've already put my perfume on and I've been out for the day and I think I might go out again or whatever, then I won't actually put it on me. I won't put it on my neck or on my wrists, but I'll spray some in the air and it immediately gives me that feeling that I'm going to do a devotional to hell. I'm going to do divination to connect with hell, you know, so it just sort of, puts me in the mode um also here i've got a long sword this is actually a brooch it's a pin that i bought when i was in edinburgh last year long swords are a symbol that hell often gives to me so um one of the cards that she uses to give me signs is ace of swords she's also many times uh communicated with me through sending me a symbol of a long sword in some way so when i saw this in edinburgh last year i was in a really difficult point in my life um, I was in a difficult point in my relationship with her because she's a death goddess and my brother had literally just died like the month before. Um, so I was going through a really difficult time in my connection with her and trying to figure out how could that be steadfast, you know, in these circumstances. And at that moment, I saw that long sword in a shop and I was just like, OK, I need that. I need that for the altar. It's going to help me to kind of like reconnect. And remember all the value that I've experienced over time from having those messages and those signs from hell, knowing that she cares for me deeply, that she's connected to me deeply. I want to make sure I don't miss anything. So um, this uh, skull stone that I have here, which is just absolutely righteous, this was given to me by the same very close friend that gave me the lapis. So to me, it's partly... Um, feeling the presence of like the love and care and connection that that friend has given to me over time. And she's also a witch as well. So it's really nice to have witchy objects and witchy elements on your altar that were gifted to you or that you bought from another witch, you know? So that's always good. I've also got a bell here. Oh, there we go. Uh, really, really good for just like clearing the energy quickly. I am definitely um, not shy of being a bit of a bit of a basic traditionalist when it comes to having a bell. I have a bell on my main working altar as well. I just find it's a really quick and simple way to feel like the energy has been refreshed and aligned and I'm ready to do something. And I will use the bell to clear energy when my room has been untidy and I tidy the room and then I just uh, ring the bell over the altar. I do use it before devotionals and um, divination too sometimes. It depends. I tune into the energy and decide whether or not anything needs to happen. So you'll see that I've got two bowls on here and I've got also a couple of bags. Obviously, I moved that bag off. So in the bags, uh, this one obviously contains my resin runes that I use to commune with hell. Sometimes I'll just pick out one or I'll pick out three and ask her for a message or just meditate on what comes through. Sometimes I actually throw runes, you know, I'll put a tray on the altar and throw the runes. In this one is just something that I'm kind of like, um, I'm kind of imbibing with her energy. OK, so this is a bag of uh, crystal bits that I want to take with me on a specific trip. So I've got some my clear quartz there, clear quartz point, 
a piece of uh, black tourmaline, which, as I mentioned, is very much connected to her. And then I've also got this beautiful rainbow quartz, again, given to me by the same witch that gave me these other two pieces that I've mentioned. So lots of gifts from my beautiful witchy friend, Emily, one of my closest friends in the world. So I'm just basically, I've put that there so that she can oversee it so that I can get that hell energy um, on those crystals before I go away. In this in this uh, bowl here, I've just got some fun bits basically. So um, I like to collect bracelets with skulls on them and wear them during my devotionals and when I do meditations on hell. I've got even more actually, but I was wearing them the other day. So they're over on my dresser. But yeah, I collect bracelets with skulls on. I've also got here the um, skeleton hand hair clips and I've got a necklace here with uh, plastic bones on it. So you could say that this is a fun little accessorizing bowl there. Um, and I sometimes change out the stuff that's in there. You know, I've got a lot of different jewelry with skulls and crossbones and things. So I will kind of like swap things in and out. Um, also, if I'm going to be wearing jewellery for a particular night out or whatever, and I just want to put that hell energy on it, I'm very likely to put that jewellery in this bowl. This is my second set of runes. It's a wooden set of runes that I use. So, yeah, just to give you a vibe, it's completely different from the big resin set that I usually favour. But sometimes I want to use the wood runes. And also, if I want to go away, the wooden runes are what I would choose. They're way more compact. They're way lighter. So I like to keep them on the altar as well. And then in here, I have my prayer beads. This is a very special bowl. It's got sentimental value. It belonged to someone that I knew that's no longer with us. Um, and my mom inherited it and as a keepsake and she gave it to me. So this is my first set of um, hell prayer beads that I ever got. I commissioned them from Joey Morris from Starry Eyed Supplies. Absolutely love them. Um, I barely use this set anymore, but I always will keep them on the altar. I've got a second set that were made for me by a, a witch who gifted them to me. Um, love this set. Often use this. And um, I've also got my Chaos Star Rosary here. Um, I on and off use this for uh, praise, praying to hell or doing devotional to hell, rather, should I say. On and off I use this. Sometimes it's in a bag for my sort of going away and then I've got kind of like some little skulls in the bottom here again just for fun I love all the skull imagery so that's really what's going on there more or less um let me show you a close-up of the collage this is the main piece of devotional art that I've made for her that I really love and then here you can see the image that I use of the of the grave the tombstone and look at this bad boy. Come on now. <laughs> you can't say fairer than that, really. OK, darling. So this is the main working altar. Um, there's not really too much going on here, to be honest with you. Hello. You can see that I have a mirror that I've had for a long time. I work a lot with a mirror in my magic and ritual. Um, and on the mirror, you've got a few bits and pieces there. You've got like um, a mask that I have used for ritual quite a few times. I've got some beautiful jewellery there. Um, that necklace is, is currently charging um, in preparation for an event. I do a lot of that kind of thing. Um, in my magic, you know, jewellery enchantment and jewellery charging and stuff. So that's what's going on there. And then I'll take you through a few bits and pieces. I won't do like the entire thing in depth and I'm certainly not going to do the drawers below. I'm not doing that on any of my altars today. Um, but do rest assured there are sort of like storage elements below on all three of my altars. So on the hell altar, I'm storing crystals below there. Um, I probably will show you my Mary altar. I will show you what's under there, but it would be way too much to go through these drawers. There's so much in them, guys, but just rest assured that there's like poppets under there and candles and boxes and all kinds of different things. Like um, my essential oils are in there, different plates and stuff like that that I use. So there's a lot of different stuff going on beneath the surface. But let me just show you a few things that are on the surface. So here I've got a lava lamp. I don't have it on because it's like the daytime here and there's no point in having it on. You're not going to get anywhere near the impressive quality of it when it's on at night. I've got my cauldron, kind of a staple for witches. I use my cauldron for a lot of um, fire magic, like release work and stuff like that, manifestation work. Um, here you've got my Joan of Arc. I work very closely with St. Joan of Arc. 
And so I've always had a portrait of her on my altar. And I've also got um, uh, Archangel Michael as well, who I work more closely with now. Um, I've always had like a soft spot for Archangel Michael. I come from a Catholic uh, background on my dad's side of the family, many of you will know. And Archangel Michael has always been in my consciousness since I was a child, but um, definitely connected him with him more closely during my pilgrimage to Walsingham. So that's really interesting little development. And I bought that prayer card during my pilgrimage to Walsingham. Um, what else? I've got my um, mortar and pestle on there. I'm actually working on something in there right now. Um, here at the front, you might wonder what that is. That is Moringa tea that I'm using at the moment. I'm drinking a lot of ritual tea at the moment at my altar while I do my scripting and stuff like that. So it's like enchanted tea, you know, like consecrated tea. Uh, there's a special potion going on in here. And this is just a spare container for tea and potion that I sometimes use that I bought from a charity shop a few months ago that I just really love. This is a spare container as well. There's nothing in there right now. And this is also spare. Like I said, I'm, I'm not working too closely at this altar at the moment, but I just like to have those containers on there because when I want to pour something in there, like I will do so basically. Uh, the disco ball is quite a staple for me. Um, it's really symbolic of who I am as a person and what kinds of things I think are personally empowering. Uh, the doll's heads were given to me by the same witchy friend I mentioned when I was talking about my hell altar. They were a birthday present from her. I work really closely with dolls and doll heads and doll parts. In fact, I actually have, as you can see, a doll head tattooed on me. And that is for witchy reasons. OK, and she is called Olga. So, yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of interesting doll related stuff that goes on in my practice. So it's appropriate to have dolls heads on the altar. And I usually have some dolls heads. Uh, my crystal ball, that is a chess set. I mentioned that in my um, birthday uh, uh, sort of pilgrimage, if you will, um, uh, video uh, last year, just gone that I, I bought it there. I'm doing some box magic here. There, these are two boxes with magical workings going on inside them. This box was actually open before I started filming, but I do not want you guys to see what's inside because it's private. But both of these boxes were given to me by beautiful witches who I love dearly. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's uh, really powerful, particularly to work with boxes that were gifted to you by witches. So yeah, really, really powerful. And look at this. Look at all this glittery glue around here. This is a really beautiful box made for me by my friend Carly. So, yeah, I've basically been using that for my box magic. This is also a box that I use for magic a lot, this mirrored box. I'm not, there isn't a working in here at the moment, but I love to keep it on my altar because I love the mirrored effect and I think it kind of contrasts, excuse that stuff behind me, I just came in and threw my stuff everywhere. <laughs> and there's my tripod behind me where I was just talking to a client. Um, but yeah, I, I like to have that on there and keep it on there as like a more permanent fixture because I love the way it plays off of the glass in the background. I'm very aesthetic with my decisions, you know. There's a few things on here that you guys might find really interesting. Um, first of all, oh my god, look at these doll hands that I bought when I was in Bruges. I just love them. I don't know what I'm going to use them for yet, but I've just sat them there with this lapis. And when I get an inspiration for what I'm going to use them for, um, I will definitely go ahead and do so. But it's definitely going to be magical anyway. I know that much. Um, these pink heads here and here, these kind of like Roman statue heads, uh, they're not really relating to anything. I just think they're really pretty and they add a more kind of like classically masculine element to the altar. And I just think they're really gorgeous. I did have them in my living room, but I wanted to move them to the altar. And in this one is got a ritual carved wooden spoon. And in this one, you've got an antler. I know it might seem a bit weird, me being so vegan and all, but this was certainly purchased in a vintage store. Again, I got this on my travels in Bruges. Um, and I like the way they play off of each other, the spoon and the antler. Um, I have been using the antler as a wand um on and off and it feels amazing to use it as a wand guys i could not recommend enough it is so potent and i've used it in workings as well as a symbol of strength and as a symbol of like pushing forward and gaining momentum because that's what i really think of when i see antlers the spoon i've used in workings to spoon things out of the mortar and pestle that kind of thing so that's useful um i've got my brother's prayer beads here i like to keep things from my brother on the altar. This was also my brother's. Um, 
love this. This is a charming little trinket that we found in his possessions. So I took that for my altar. Um, this eye I've had for a long, long time. This I use for the cleansing of the altar, the protection of the objects on the altar. And this knife is from my Ukrainian friend. It belonged to his Ukrainian grandmother, his wonderful witchy grandmother, who is somewhat of a legend in our friendship group. We've all heard so much about her. Uh, she died a while ago and it was um, really difficult for my friend. They had a very, very close cosmic bond. Um, and he actually gave me this knife um, as a gift and it has pride of place. It's absolutely beautiful. I've always wanted to work with an athame. And I never purchased one because I never felt like it was right. I don't know what what it was, but like none of the athames that I found in witchy shops or like gorgeous ceremonial looking knives that I found in shops, none of them were working for me. And I kept thinking, I want to work with a fucking knife. I do have a, a vintage letter opener, a beautiful ivory vintage letter opener that I used to use as my athame, but I never had a blade. I never actually had a knife itself until Vlad gave me this one and I fucking love it. And I fucking do love it. I cried when I opened it. It's such a beautiful thing to give to me and I will treasure it for the rest of my life. So yeah, that came all the way from Kiev for me, which is awesome. So this is the setup right now. Um, I don't sit at this altar every day. I'm doing a lot more work at my Mary and Hell altars. Um, this candle holder is also my brother's. So um, I think maybe I'm getting used to having his objects on the altar. Um, obviously, it's a, a very difficult feeling and a difficult thing, but it's also something that I want to contend with because I feel like it's the right thing, you know? Um, so I think I'm getting used to that. And I think um, also it's just more relevant for me right now to work at my goddess specific altars. I'm doing a lot of healing work. Um, I'm doing a lot of prayer and I feel like I want that presence of my goddesses. So uh, this altar has become lately slightly less relevant, but I still love it. I still maintain it. You know, I'd still light a candle here and there on this altar. I like to come and sit here in the morning to commune with St. Joan of Arc. Um, and it, like, obviously, I have some workings going on here, but I'm not sitting here every day. This is not my main my main vibe right now, but it is the main working altar. And I will always return back to it as kind of like the HQ, if you will. This is Maddox Witchy HQ right here. So I love this green glass Um dresser plate I love anything like that I've got a few of them I collect them they're so useful in witchcraft you can see another one there I absolutely love these I'm obsessed I when I find one in a charity shop I will uh, certainly consider buying it so I love green glass it's a vibe so yeah that's what's going on here at the uh the main altar okay my darlings I wanted to wait a little while to film my Mary altar for you I don't know how well this is going to translate but basically I really wanted the sun to go down a bit so I could show you my Mary altar in its glory so this is a space in the living room that I come to fully for devotion with mother Mary okay and on the back here you can see that I've got some enamel pins that's in no way even nearly all of my enamel pins, I really need to put the rest of them on. And I need to get some more. But you can see there's like some band badges there and some sentimental badges that I got from my journeys in Russia. And just like, yeah, basically some badges that people gifted me and stuff. And then I've got the pentacle over here that was made for me by a subscriber many moons ago. And I have treasured it and kept it ever since. Um, and then we come down into the main situation here. So I have a working altar for Mary, working altar, working candle for Mary, just as I have with hell. And so I've lit that up for you. I use this set of candles that's got different flavors of pink in because I really associate pink with Mother Mary and I really associate rose quartz with Mother Mary and stuff. So that kind of works for me. I've also got a candle behind here with this beautiful gold candle holder that I bought ages ago from a shop and I just thought that's so devotional looking I love it you can see that I've got two statuettes of Mary here uh, that one I got from a vintage store and that necklace around her neck has sentimental value it was given to me by a child in the street that I had a really beautiful conversation with over here this one was bought from kind of like a witchy slash knickknack shop I really love that one I've got a cutout of Mary here as well that I really like, that I sort of made and coloured in and stuff. And then here, this, this beautiful Perspex changeable light is absolutely the apple of my eye right now when it comes to 
my Mary work and praying the rosary and everything, it really makes me want to come here and sit down. I'm doing the majority of my work, as I said, at my goddess altars at the moment. And I'm praying the rosary a lot. And I'm really working with my relationship with the rosary. So this just makes it all the more enjoyable to come and sit. It's got loads of different modes on it, but I really like this one where it just changes colour. Here in front, you might wonder what that is. That is a tulip that is very much dried out now. Um, it's a sentimental souvenir, I guess, from a beautiful weekend with a beautiful person that I had recently. So I've got that there and it cheers me up and reminds me of that. My unicorns. I always have my unicorns on my Mother Mary altar. I don't know. It just makes sense to me. Um, I've got my rose oil here. My rose water, sorry. Um, it's, it's rose water with a little bit of rose oil in it um, that I always put on my pulse points when I do my devotionals to Mary and sometimes when I pray the rosary as well. Got a little nun statuette here. I find nun imagery really interesting and just the whole idea of women like giving their lives to a celestial being and, you know, doing work in the community or just shutting themselves up to do gardening and pray and sing. I just find that really interesting. Uh, lots of rose quartz on this altar, my darlings. Lots and lots like jelly tots. Okay, I've got rose quartz balls here, rose quartz pieces. There's also some amethyst, some citrine. I do like my crystals. Um, there's another bit of rose quartz here, like a rose quartz crystal that I scry into sometimes. Um, I do like um, my uh, my crystals. I don't buy them new anymore, but the ones that I already have, I love. Got some CBD oil there and my leftover rose oil to add to my rose water because I don't find rose water really thick enough for my purposes. I always need to add a bit of rose oil. So I do so. Uh, in the front here, you've got a lot of rosary action happening, tons of rosary action. Um, this is uh, rose oil as well, but it's also got frankincense in it and stuff. It's a really nice scent. And the bottle was given to me by a friend um, who went to Rome and brought it back with her for me. This is absolutely beautiful, this Cobra Jasper wand that I've been working with. I've been holding it while I pray the rosary, holding it while I meditate. Really love that. This is a frozen Charlotte doll, um, a vintage frozen Charlotte that was gifted to me by a beautiful friend and client. Uh, absolutely love it. It gives me such a um, baby Jesus vibe when it's placed inside that gorgeous oyster shell, which also um, is a gift from like a wondrous friend and client that I've uh, known for a long time, made it for me, love it. Um, so yeah, let me get into the, into the rosary action. <laughs> More rose quartz there. Ridiculous. Um, what's that on my carpet? I don't know what that is. Okay. So I've got, um, a few rosaries in the front because I love to mix it up and I love to play with different rosaries depending on my mood and my needs. Um, so this one here, this is a vintage rosary, a very important, very old vintage rosary from a rather well-known rosary company in Dublin. I absolutely love it. It is very old. Um, I posted about it when I got it on when I got it on Instagram. I posted about it. Let me um, let me put a little bit of light on the situation actually, so you can really see this because I think the light is hindering you from being able to see. Where was I? Okay, so the vintage rosary that I got from a vintage shop that's from Dublin. Absolutely love it. Absolutely in love with it. Hang on. I don't know if you can see it properly or not. I really don't. This is such an amateur video, guys, but whatever. Um, yeah, so this one has still got the label attached to it and it's got the label in Gaelic as well. So I really love that. Um, obviously, it's caused me to find it a little bit difficult to actually pray the rosary with this because I really don't want to take this very vintage uh, label off. So that makes it tough, but I'm just playing with it. I'm just like strengthening my relationship with it really, you know? So that's what's happening there. I've got a rosary in here that I got from the Basilica of St. Nicholas in Amsterdam. I love this one. I love this uh, very contemporary take on the crucifix. It's just really different. So I'm really into that. Love the pink um beads with the flowers on them they're very me i pray the rosary with this one a lot uh the box is also from amsterdam and i do take this one away with me so this one gets a lot of love i've got a couple in here as well 
Um, this one I made for myself. I took the cross off of it and put on like um, a medallion from my pilgrimage to Our Lady of Walsingham, uh, the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham in Norfolk. So that's really special. And then here, my darlings, in this box, this is a gorgeous First Holy Communion box. And inside is a very, very special rosary that my friend Siobhan made for me. And I'm working with this one so much right now. This is my main head bitch in charge when it comes to rosaries. Look at it. Look at that. It's absolutely sumptuous. I did post a picture of it on Instagram on the day that she presented it to me. And I just love it. Like, it's such a beautiful thought. And she just puts so much care and love and attention into it, which doesn't surprise me at all. It's got all these really fabulous pretty beads on it. So I'm working with that one a lot at the minute. Uh, my chimes are here, darlings, because I'm chanting a lot when I'm at this altar at the moment. And then down here below, you will see that I have got quite a few books on the Mother Mary. Way of the Rose there, Mystery of Mary, Imitating Mary... I've got the Gnostic Gospels, which I like to dig into. And then here you've got my Journey of Love Oracle, my Mother Mary Oracle, and my Angel Oracle as well, because I do like to work with angel energies. And here in the middle, if you're wondering what this bag is, it is all my prayer cards, all my different prayer cards. And this is the clip that I use to clip some of them together. When I go away, I just select which prayer cards I'm going to want to take with me. And I take some with me. So there we go. This is my beautiful, sumptuous Mother Mary altar. And uh, I feel really at home here. And it's a really comforting place for me. So all in all, these are my altars, the three main working altars. I do have other places in my place, in my flat, that are kind of like, um, you can see I've got more rosaries here. And here I got this one from Bruges. And this one, where did I get that one from? I think that was from a local place. There's no massive special story behind that, but I collect rosaries, darlings. So uh, lots of them have special stories or are special to me for some reason. Anyway, um, yeah, there are other places of spiritual interest in my home, other little shrine type areas in my hallway um, and in my kitchen and my bedroom. But these are the main working altars. These are the places that I would say are explicitly witchy in nature and that I come to to be as witchy as possible as often as possible. I hope you've enjoyed looking around my main altars. Um, let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you've gotten any inspiration from seeing my spaces. And uh, sorry, this video is so amateur, but I think it's the only way I could film it because I was getting stressed out thinking about making it perfect. And frankly, like, fuck that shit, you know, it is what it is. These are my altars. This is the light I was filming in. This is the mood I was in. And that's that on that. So I've enjoyed letting you into my space and letting you into my, my sacred areas. Much love. Blessed be.